Hello, this is Sally with Rainy Day Gypsy. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I just wanted to say hello from Missoula, Montana and introduce the first part of the tutorial for my little Papillon journal. I hope you have fun creating her. And if you have any questions, post them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Happy creating. Bye-bye. In this lesson, I'd like to go over some of the materials that I have used for my Papillon journal. She is made from two envelopes. This particular journal, I used five inch square envelopes, one for the front cover and one for the back, and then used the flap to, to close her. So um, here are my five inch square envelopes, and I will eventually, in one of our lessons, glue this envelope onto the other flap. That's the front cover, that's the back cover, and then there's the flap. So I wanted to give you an idea. You don't have to use five inch square envelopes. I wanted to give you an idea of some of the envelopes you can use. This is just a large business envelope. And if we glued it together like that, this makes um, pretty much a traveler's notebook size. This one is a six by nine envelope, these two. And I really like this size. That's nice. And I love this one. Playing around in my envelope stash, I thought, well, why not see what little ones look like? So here, I think these are about four by six. And look at that, isn't that cute? I could see me making one of these next. So you will have to decide what size of envelope you want before we get ready to tear our papers, of course, because you'll want to tear them to match your envelope size. Okay, so I wanted to go over some of the papers that I use. Uh, this pile happens to be uh, papers that I will cut or tear for my pages in the journal. Now, that's a lot of pages. And I know that the Little Papillon Journal has four, or I'm sorry, 10 pages, four sides each, so that would be 40 pages to decorate. So this is way more than 10 pages. <laughs> but I will go through here as we work and decide which ones I really want, and then use those, throw the papers over into my scrap pile to use as our collaging. So just to give you an idea of what I use, this was pulled out of a, an old uh, notebook or encyclopedia type thing for the ocean tide charts up in the San Juan Islands in Washington State. <laughs> but I loved it because it has this aqua that is going to be my color theme. So that's something I might use. And here is another um, piece that was in my tea dyed stash. And it's nothing special, but it's aqua. And that's my theme. That's another thing you need to do is figure out what your color theme will be. You don't have to do just one color or several colors. You could do a plethora of colors, but it might be wise to figure that out now before you start pulling your papers. This one is the color I like. This is my cabbage dyed paper. This is from an old history book. And of course, there's that blue again. Um, I have put some digital downloads in this lesson for you. And these happen to be in the digital downloads. And I printed all my digital downloads out on tea dyed paper, as you can see, because I love that feel and that look. So these two things will make some good pages. This is in the download. Find some old book pages. I love this because of that natural aging there on the edges. 
and this has a really good little water stain. Here's one from an old, old ledger dated 1905. And of course it's nice and crispy and distressed, naturally distressed. I love this and I will be making a page out of that or two. Um, I always throw in a an envelope as a page and, and I decorate it up. This one I happen to tear off at the end because I'm going to use it as a page and use this as a pocket. Um, I may just use some plain old tea dyed paper as a page and then collage on it so I threw that in there. Another download. This happens to be old old Eastern European Eastern European money that my daughter found an, in a flea market in 2003 in Austria, I believe. And of course this money is way outdated. And um, so I have scanned it and enlarged it and then printed it out uh, bottom to bottom and then I will cut it out and fold it this way and it'll look just like money. Let me show you. This is the middle of my journal. So here's the money. It even feels like money. But I have stenciled on it and distressed it, folded it. So you get the picture. So that's in your downloads also. This is another piece of my cabbage dyed paper and I, and I ran it through my Sizzix to um, get an embossing on that another download and again I'm going to fold this this way and then make a page out of it. In our next lesson we'll be making our pages so, so you, you'll get a clue of what I'm talking about. This is an old old label in there again look at those colors. That's in your downloads also. So is this. This is from a book I have that um, has a lot of old old um, maps of um, I don't think just Paris. It might be just Paris, but I thought it was all of France, but it might just be Paris. This is Versailles, so I think it's all of France. An old document. And this one I love. Um, I don't know if that came out of an old music book or what, but I did print it on uh, a kind of a green. And then I do, I like to use music old old music and here again we have that natural natural aging and I really picked this page because I loved this and I may just cut this out and use that somewhere in the journal too as well as this but study for Tristan and Isolde it's pretty so there you have it for my papers that I'll be using for pages and then the leftovers will go in, in my collaging pile. Okay, let's get rid of those. Now I want to show you my collaging pile. <laughs> this is just all sorts of scraps and some of them are the downloads and scraps of and pieces of paper and stuff that I love. Um, there's a reason we call it junk journaling, I guess. Here's a pile of junk. Uh, old papers from old books, kind of a crinkly, fun, noisy paper, some old braille, uh, a piece from an old ledger. These things collage so well, they just cut like butter. This is a boo-boo that I did on the printer when I was making something, but I thought it might be pretty to pull. Just plain old colored paper, old papers from old diaries, and this guy looks like he was a weatherman, 1954, so I pulled that out. A page from an old um, legal book, I believe, a page from an old music book, an old letter. I believe this one's in your downloads. We'll tear that up. An old diary page. 
another one of those on uh, blue paper. I love this. I might cut this out and use it somewhere. Embossing on my cabbage paper. Just old snips and tissue paper. Dictionary. This is old, old scrapbook paper. Look at that. But it really is fun to use. This is, these are in your downloads. Look at that color. <laughs> this one is uh, one of my dad's old tax ledgers. Uh, it's got this cool edging and then of course it's my colors and of course it's very special to me because it was my dad's. More embossing. I will be using a little um, glassine bag that I tea dyed. I'll put that in there. If you don't have one of these it's not a big deal. We can make a little envelope. More little pieces from the geography. This is from some game. Another little noisy piece. Another butterfly that I had found somewhere. This happens to be paper lace that I uh, use to decorate the edges of my pantry shelves. Embossing. This is an envelope that was in my box that has papillon, so I'm definitely going to use that. I love old tissue paper from old patterns. Those are easy to find at the, at the used, like the Goodwill stores, that sort of thing. This is from an old French book that my sister bought for me. Another one of these sheets. <laughs> uh, a, a little piece from an old piano roll, player piano. Ooh, a bingo card. We'll play with that. I think this is, these are your downloads. And here's one that's in your downloads that's um, butterflies that we'll use throughout. This is my creation. We'll use him. So those are a lot of ideas on scraps and little bits that you have laying around in your scrapbook or in, in your scrap pile. So pull those out. The next thing I'll be using is my homemade washi tape. And I love to make my homemade washing tape because it's like no one else's. I print my, ta my tape onto this translucent paper that I get from Amazon. And then I run it through my, uh, I run it through my label maker and it makes it sticky on the back. I, I believe I have a tutorial on YouTube that shows how to do that. So you might look that up. And you can see that I used fabric on the front cover of the journal. These two pieces are from the same swatch, and then this one is different, I see. But um, this piece, this fabric, I found years ago. I've had it for about 20 years. I believe I bought it at Quilt Market. I bought a roll of about 15 yards. It was so gorgeous. <laughs> I still have a lot left. So I took some pieces and I put about a teaspoon of bleach into a, a quart of warm water and then I dipped my pieces in it, um, not that it, unevenly, so that it looks like it's bleached in different spots and you can see the difference. And then I rinsed the bleach out and I dipped it in uh, tea dye water. Be careful you don't leave it in the bleach or the tea dye for that matter too long or the bleach will take everything out. But just give it a little dip here and there or put it in a bottle and squirt it. So anyway, I'll be using that. Now the fun pile. <laughs> this is a pile of tapes and trims, laces, um, all sorts of fun things that you can round up in from your stash. This happens to be 
my hand-dyed silk strips that I sell in my store on my website. This one is the Tiffany color. Um, more hand-dyed silk. It's a little darker, brighter, I should say. This is a real tight weave cheesecloth, I believe. And you can see that I dyed it. It's all um, light and dark, which I, I really love that look. This is some tool that was on something I ordered. C came wrapped up in that, which is pretty. Um, an old curtain. Look at that edge. My hand dyed velvet ribbon. That color is so gorgeous I can't get enough of it. And a piece of a uh, real loose weave uh, cheesecloth. I love this ticking. Th this one I happen to tea dye, but I have this in several colors and I just love ticking and it it's just so funky when you throw just a little bit of it in your journal. This is not old lace, but it certainly has the color I want. Here's some old, old lace. Strips of lace. Some of these we'll be using for decoration. Some of they'll be some of them will be using will be using to um, reinforce the spine of our pages. This is an old hanky that I've cut up. More lace. I don't know that we'll use all this, but I have put out enough that I can pick from. Love that one. A little piece of white burlap. And this one uh, I will cut down to the size of my page, which will be like 10 inches by 5 inches. And I'm going to make a page out of that. I'll show you. So here's that page. And, it's, and it just sits there. I don't collage or do anything to it. It's just there for pretty prettiness. So there's that pile. And then I have a little bin of goodies that I have either cut out on my Sizzix or torn from other pieces. This I just happened to have bought the other day on sale at Joann's. It's Tim Holtz. Same here, same with this one. Little piece of sorry trim. And part pieces of an old doily that I will use on the cover. Another cutout. Little snippets and pieces of embossing, more ribbon, uh, my paper. What else? Oh, a tea bag. Just all sorts of little little goodies that you may or may not use. One thing I forgot to put in there uh, is buttons. We probably will use some buttons. So at this point, you should have a pretty good idea of what you're going to need in order to start your Papillon journal. Let's, let's go over it. It's um, papers for your pages, papers for your collaging, which can be much smaller than this, fabric for the cover, Laces and trims, and little snippets of tiny little things. Oh, and washi tape. Don't forget to download the washi tape. Or use your own. Oh, and envelopes. Let's not forget our envelopes, wherever they went. Our envelopes. Two envelopes the same size. So there you go. In the next lesson, we're going to start tearing and cutting pages for our papers for our pages. So we'll see you then. Thanks.